Are we guys? Yeah, I'm ready to go. We're wearing hats. I just know this. Yeah, that's hat squad. Hat squad. What's up, guys? Rising Duelist. Jay here. Got Kona Bennett. I got Showfish. It's been that long, you've forgotten me already. Uh, I, was, I wanted you to say, What up? Uh, what up? What, 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 what up, fishes? Let's just take a moment to realize how long it's been since Jay and I have been in a video on this channel, too. <laughs> right? like, like, we never see each other anymore either. Like, life is just happening, so. Uh, so but we good, still, we still talk a lot. Oh, we always talk. Yeah, but one of the things that we always like talk about recently is uh, price gouging. And that's oh, something yes. that we want to talk to you guys about right now. Uh, price gouging, what it is. Uh, let's just go ahead and quick give a quick definition about what it is. A uh, card comes out, or an old card that comes out that's maybe a bit harder to get, and the people that do get it uh, decide to create uh, like an artificial scarcity and raise the prices to what higher than what is normally expected for these cards. Mm -hmm. So saying that, guys, let's go ahead and talk about a few things that might cause such a thing and first thing mm -hmm. let's just go ahead and talk about the elephant in the room that's konami konami i i firmly always think that konami is some way shape or form responsible for price gouging because yeah. konami just tells you how much this product is worth you know battle pack legends 3 is gonna be worth 20 bucks <laughs> it's probably worth less now because it was a trash set the point is they tell you how much the set is worth mm -hmm. now you always will have one of those usually except for what i just listed <laughs> sets will usually have one or two chase cards mm -hmm. like um you know the one or two secret rares the rarities are all i don't know i don't know the rarities by heart but i know a lot of us do I know that like you know hatred hey, is gonna be so expensive because the yeah. only secret rare in that set or um Oh dear lord, remember when like Exodon Knight came out? Yeah. That was hugely gouged, not just because of its versatility, but also because of the rarity. So that's two things to consider always, is that, is the card good? And how rare is it going to be? Because like yeah. Underclock Taker, which we talked about it's before. really good, yeah. Or Babuska's a super, and that's, that's really true, good. That's good. Shiro's Shiro's a rare, there, so Konami does good. So, so there is some good, but if you have two cards that fit in the center, oh it's a higher rarity and it's a staple. Yeah, and then you you run into these cards yeah, done, yeah, for nice. for Konami, and it becomes really obvious. I think with Maximum Crisis, when both Ash Blossom and Diagram were mm -hmm. both like commoners are rare, totally awesome was also like a commoner are rare in the OCG. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Konami does this thing where they they test. Okay, let's really see these cards in the OCG. Uh, okay, this is like highly played. This is highly played. This is highly played. Mm -hmm. All right, let's uh, make these ones secrets in the TCG. Did that actually yeah. way back? I think one of the few cards from Shadow Spectres, we're talking about Shadow Spectres, like before filming, I think yeah. one card that came out of Shadow Spectres, Mistake. I think Mistake, mistake came out, yeah. I think came out mistake. of Shadow Spectres. Yeah, it did. That was a rare in OCG, and it was a secret rare, and that was like a $15 card if you were lucky to pull it back then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Mistake can still be used nowadays, but the point is, like, that was a card that you need to have in order to stop your opponent from doing anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Konami, yeah. I mean, what do you think? Is like. No, it's, it's, it's honestly like. Uh, I do think sometimes because I know for a fact like um, some cards in the OCG are higher rarities than cards that we have and sure. they, mm -hmm. they end up changing that for us because they're like oh, okay like this is a good card that everyone can see play but then again there's like we just said they, they switch it up on us like totally awesome was a, I'm pretty sure it was a rare in <laughs> OCG think, and that comes out as a secret and then Look at that, like people are going crazy over frogs and they all the prices of frogs spike. I mean, and it's one thing to go from like, oh, there's a common, here's a super. Yeah. yeah. But when you're going from the lowest or second lowest rarity to the highest, to the highest, highest rarity, secret, that's yeah. a, it's nuts. No, that's not really fair. Now, if you're doing a rarity with super, I could, we could deal with that, you know? Yeah. yeah. I'm, pretty, I'm like very, very confident Diagram was a common. Mm. Well, oh, I mean, yeah, one, sure one thing too. that they did to us for Konami here, and this is because they they, re, they replayed the game here, <laughs> but when um, Pendulum Evolution came out, yeah. all the magicians were, were commons because they were structured decks. So this yeah. is another like good example of mm -hmm. they recreated, you know, I like we said artificial, because it reminds me of like artificial flavoring, which is bad for you. So they created this artificial like market right here going, okay, we're going to then take this and make it a sealed product to which everyone and their mother threw a fit about. Granted, that's why I think it's why vendors like everyone else kind of was like really calm on their prices because mm -hmm. Konami is like, we, we really done fucked up. And there was nothing in that set. I mean, now people want it because oh, that's a lot of magician stuff came out there. But nothing exactly. in that set at the time was anything that people wanted. Like, okay, let's. They should just. Uh, the only card I could think that was a really good reprint was Cleef Fort Monolith. I think that was the only one that was good because. <laughs> but, but here's the thing: because Monolith at the time still had like a sixty dollar price tag, so no one was playing Cleef. But it was like if you wanted to build Cleef, it was like, ridiculous. Well, they reprinted some Malfo stuff too. Like, I mean, I mean it's all cheap. I mean, really cheap cards. I'm talking about the only good card. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> hey, Astrograph's now broken, so. Yeah, yeah Astrograph's But Astrograph's still pretty cheap. <laughs> Astrograph's still cheap, though, so you can buy a broken Yeah, yeah so. Cheap. So, they, uh, Konami does a lot of little stuff where it, it should be. 
if, if it was just copied from the OCG, everyone would have good access to these stuff. Like people, imagine if Ash was a common. Like, holy mm. hell! <laughs> oh man, that'd be great. Like one half of, the, of my complaining would be gone. Yeah, Ash would be Ash. Would <laughs> everyone be would have it. Yeah, and it would, it would be a bit more of a even playing field. Okay, I think that's good for us. Like okay. uh, next one, let's go ahead and go into vendors. All right, the vendors. Okay. All right, next one that we're going to be talking about is a bit more. Uh, the, the spicy meme here. Uh, we're gonna talk about vendors because vendors. This is when feelings are showing up in the. Yeah, yeah vendors have a, a, a lot because basically vendors are the ones who really decide the prices. That's Konami true, yeah. can mm-hmm. print out something because uh, another example is Zark. Uh, yeah, yeah, Zark is like two dollars, and yeah. it was a secret. At, at release, it was two dollars, mm-hmm. and it was a secret. So, and it was it was not a secret in the OCG either. So it was one of those things where they bumped up the rarity, but yeah. it didn't change the price whatsoever because the vendors or people selling it decided. Given it was more commonly pulled, exactly, but it was still a high rarity card, but no one was selling it for that. There was, no, de- there was no demand for it. There was yeah. no demand for it. If people, when people are wanting a card and only a limited amount of people have it, they can start raising the price a little yeah, bit. Yeah, good, good example of that too. Um, when Master Servers came out in just the recent set, uh, it was cool. literally like a dollar yeah. because and they no were like, no one like, cares. The mythical beasts suck. Like, why are we gonna do this? So literally, on TCG Player, every Master Servers is a dollar. I kid you not, a week goes by, every master service goes up to $30, gets bought out. There's like two vendors, because I was looking at it, because I already had my play set, and there's only like two vendors selling them for 40 each. Yep. And I'm like, that is nonsense, like that is crazy. And then as time went by, it slowly dwindled down, but we still see master service at 20, even though not every uh, magician deck is playing it. It's yeah. like. It, 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 this, this is because of the vendors. This is like, yeah. For those of you who didn't pay attention at all in your economics class, here's your essential economic theory. You know, supply and demand, where, what people want, what people need, blah, blah, blah. But the vendors, I think this is where a lot of people get things personal because yeah. some of us may know yeah. vendors. We got our, our good buddy Zach as a vendor. You know, yep. shout outs to him. Um, and so there's nothing wrong with that. But unfortunately, I think people get hurt with, with vendors. And because we, we all know this, there's no, there's not everyone is good. You know, we've met some really fantastic duelists. We've met some terrible duelists. Yeah. Great vendors, asshole vendors. You know, great people. It doesn't matter where you are in the world, you will find the good and bad out of virtually almost everybody, especially these nerd subcultures. But <laughs> with like with vendors, though, it's like it becomes risky because a lot of us know vendors personally, and we respect that they're vendors. But at the same time, it's kind of like I don't know. Well, just because like. Konami made a mistake. Konami can make a mistake. The vendors gotta rectify the mistake by making another mistake. Then, then, then everything else. So it's kind of like a domino yeah. effect. All yeah. these people are all connected some way, shape, or form. And I think one of the biggest things about this is that we start noticing. And for me, this is a, a, a kind of a douchebag thing. Uh, it's one thing to buy out a car and raise a price. That's kind of douchebag. Yeah. But it's another thing to buy out every single actual box and raise the price mm-hmm. of the box. That's yep. where that's where I get really offended. And like we were talking about this earlier is the fact that, you know what, if you buy like one car right now that's out of nowhere hype, and I'm sorry, this is complete bullshit. That's hype, Nateria Rose Whip, I'm sorry. You sit there and, you know, I'll be the meme, change my mind, that should be worth that price. Yeah, I'm, sure sure. Like, I'm that meme right now. <laughs> but, um, but that's one thing, because Konami never says, oh, these cards in this set are worth this much. Yeah. They've never said that. So that I can be like, you know what, Wild Wild West, here's your play, have fun. Mm-hmm. But when you're telling me that a certain product could be worth, you know, I'll pick I'll pick on Battle Pack 3 here, 20 bucks, and some jerks that sell for, you know, even 25, I'd be outraged because this is such But, you know, if you buy that and someone's out, out buying or out selling at MSRP value, that's where it becomes really douchebaggery and, and effed up in my personal opinion because mm-hmm. that's not, you're not, you can't control that. Mm-hmm. You're not making the product, you can't sell the product like that. Yeah, yeah. no. And there's a certain part where you're like, okay, just go ahead and buy your own box and you'll be fine. Don't 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 buy from vendors. Just buy your own box. Well, first of all, if you're buying singles, let's say that Ash Blossom right now from Ash Blossom from the Electric uh, Collection is pro- it's right around like fifty five to sixty dollars right now. At time of recording. This uh, at the time of recording this video, you know, I don't want people watching the three years from now. Actually, sir, it's been reprinted nine times. It's only worth. By the way, $90. I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> interrupt. Right there, because someone commented on a deck profile. Um, please check the damn titles on these videos. I make sure I title them what month. Oh no, yeah. They'll be yeah. Yes, yes. So if you're going back at December deck profile, well, where's the soul? Where's the soul morning? Fuck you. No, it's like because it's, it's you, like the trickster you profile. profile. Yeah. Every time I see comments on my trickster profile from October of last year, and they're like, "Why are you running the scapegoats? Why are you?" I'm like, "Because back then no one was. That's what. That's what it was." This may be a separate video by itself, right there. A little PSA right at that point. PCA from Rise of Rules. <laughs> but as you were saying, though. Okay. So yes, as I was saying. Um, 
it's one thing about that, and the people are just like, well, let's go ahead and just buy the box. Uh, but now the box is, is extremely high, and one thing that I just found incredibly insane was that Walmart was bought out almost immediately. Yeah. And then as soon as they got more in stock, Walmart will still sell it at thirty dollars because it's Walmart. They don't know about what's going on here. Yeah, they don't know. But like, the overnight, and I'm not, I'm not even shitting you. Overnight, it was literally bought out online, and they were already sold out. And I remember my uh, one of our buddies Tristan was telling me, "Hey guys, uh, Walmart, they have it on the Walmart website. Go ahead and just pre-order." I checked, sold out. Like right away. He yeah. literally said it, and I remember Jay's like, "They're gone." Yeah. <laughs> and then we're like, five minutes, and then Tristan was like. What? I just what? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's you know SpongeBob five minutes later. You know, and then, and they were gone. Like I even I even bought a box by the way because I, I get married soon. Y'all know this. I ain't got no money right now. And then two, it's like I am not spending above MSRP price mm -hmm. for things. Now it's one thing, and this used to happen back in the day. I remember my buddy Andrew, shout out to him, man, if you're watching this. Um, when he, when um, the Hanzo and the Rescue Rabbit Tins came out like forever ago, 2008, yep. nine. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong down there. When that came out, when Max C got reprinted in those things, yes. Max C and certain promo, it's 2012. So those promo cards were worth the value of the tin. Yep. That I have no problem with. You can literally tell me, oh hey, I pulled an ash from this box. Ash is worth 30. I have no problem with that because you're this is the money card. You're going to make that much profit. You're breaking even. No disrespect there. Mm -hmm. But again, if you're going to raise the value of the box, it becomes the box a gamble. Itself, yeah. And, and get, granted, it is a gamble. Pulling cards, playing loot boxes, buying things online, whatever it is, always a gamble. But some of us don't want to play the gamble, you know. Yeah. And we've always said this: buy singles because it's just a lot better in the long run. But at the same it's time, not even worth it. But, yeah. but now it's not. Now it's so with this it. kind of weird thing is: is it worth it? You know. I mean, whenever a reprint shows up, I remember when the Mega Tins came out, 2015, I think, when Draco Sack got reprinted. Oh, people yeah. were saying things like, just buy the Draco; it's 20 bucks, mm -hmm. or buy the tin and pull more. But it was one of those things where, like, you know, this they're the equal price, but which one I'm guaranteed to get one, or, I'm or I might not get one, but can pull some other things. But so. exactly, it's don't don't worry, they'll, they'll raise the price of the Legendary Collection Kaiba box to sixty dollars. So yeah. it's even now. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, well, even if they had done that, like, and some Legendary Collections have been thirty, some I've seen in like the forty range. If they even did that, I could be like, all right, <laughs> let's get real. If they if they made Kaiba Collection at sixty dollars, but it was guaranteed to get an app, it, one of each of the hand traps, and then like. Stupid kind of crap, and then like maybe like all right, Gekki or another high rarity card that I could understand because you're guaranteed to plus, you're guaranteed to get the cards yeah. you want. One interesting thing about this is that there's no promos. It's uh, just it's, there's no promos. The promos inside. are reprinted inside the actual which pack. Is a, a which is which is stupid. That's another issue on Konami. Konami, I don't know what you're doing. Like you never. Oh, I know what you're. No, I know what you're doing, Konami. You I didn't do like, that for Yugi. You didn't do that for Joey. Yeah. Why Kaiba? Because Kaiba's the douchebag. They want to stay Kaiba. That's what yeah. it is. <laughs> <laughs> they literally want to stay like Kaiba. Just, just a reminder, guys. Kaiba's the bad guy. Like, why do you guys suck with this dick? Let's see if you guys keep doing that now. <laughs> All right, but one thing I do want to mention, guys, in the vendor's defense here, and uh, mm -hmm. this is uh, not an exactly popular opinion within Rights and Duels, but it is an opinion that I have. I do not personally blame the vendors. Um, simply because, and again, um, I'm going to do my best not to get too political here, but I'm just going to be stating facts here. There's this guy who just got sent to jail, Martin Scrilly. Um, <laughs> He, um, he bought this medication that was just very cheap and very easy and it was a life-saving medication. He bought the rights to it and then he sold the medication at like 5,000% of what it was. And then because of that, a lot of people could not afford this medication and a lot of people died because of that medication. He's in jail now, but he is not in jail for what he did to that medication. He's in jail for like blue collar, blue collar crime, we're ripping off rich people. Um, but the, not because of the actual medication. What he did with the medication and what plenty of people are doing, they just like, he just has such a punchable face that like <laughs> that too. He became famous and, for that. And I'm gonna call it the hip hop heads out here. If you're a Wu Tang fan, then you know you don't like this guy. Like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that Wu Tang right there. So he, uh, I think, it's, I think just because he has a punchable Ca face, the Wu Tang. Casual Latino does not comment on that. I'm just gonna be upset with you, by the way. <laughs> I'm just gonna say, man, if you don't comment on that. I'm gonna be very sad. Um, so he got a lot of hate because he's a, a really popular. But this is stuff that's happening all, like all the time. People are buying out of medication and increasing the price. Yep. So that is 100% legal. And then in the grand scheme of things, if that's 100% legal, can we really be complaining about Yu-Gi-Oh cards? It's basically the same thing. It's not the it's not Konami who's raising the price. It's individual vendors who are buying out this limited supply and then drastically raising the price. We may not like it, but that's just the society we live in. And if it's 100% okay to have into life-saving medication, how much can we really complain that it's happening to Yu-Gi-Oh cards? Yu -Oh cards. To, to clarify one thing that Jay did say, though, which I agree with everything he said right there, I personally don't blame anybody for going crazy. I think it goes goes 
bottom to top or top to bottom, you know, it goes Konami's fault, it's trickle trickle. Mm-hmm. And you're correct, people do this all the time in the real world, and that's let's just be real here, guys. If you're not aware of this, then please wake up, you know. Yeah. But the difference, I think, though, and I'll just play devil's advocate here because I love our vendors and I love, you know, Football Coin, I love Konami one day, I'll hate it the next day, we all know that. But just because, you know, vendor, just because, you know, Konami, distributor, and other people made an issue doesn't mean that you technically have to follow that same suit, though it is understandable. I, I'm more likely to forgive a vendor for doing this. I think, you know, I think so, this so, is like so, so, to, so to speak, I'm more willing to I'm more willing to err on the vendor side versus Konami side. That's basically all. I think a lot of fault goes into our next topic. Okay, uh, yes. all right. So what's going on? So next one that we're going to be talking about and it has a lot to do with uh, uh, like the hype behind.